Hey, it's Ella Powell and I'm an up and coming Australian artist and you're listening to Hank Jr. on Hank's Corner. Welcome to another special edition of Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr. I'm part of Hank Jr. Productions, where I'm documenting life's moments through photography, videography, and now podcasting. And the special part about this is that we're going back down under again to Australia, and we're going to talk to one of the fastest rising stars down there, Ella Powell. Ella, how are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. How are you? I was uh, I was just about to say good morning, but <laughs> time differences. Yes, definitely. So it's a good morning for you. Uh, it's it's an okay afternoon for me or evening time. I'm I'm glad to finally start winding down. But uh, you you're just beginning your day. Oh yes, got a lot planned for today. Very busy day, but um, thanks so much for having me. It's so good to finally be able to catch up and have a chat. I'm really excited. Yeah, well, thanks for coming on. And as I mentioned off air, uh, I've actually got a lot of requests to have you on the show, which was pretty neat uh, uh, to have that. I said, when, when are you going to get Ella on? I said, we'll work on it. And I, I'm glad this day is finally here. So uh, as I mentioned, you're, you're, you're in Australia. What part of Australia are you calling in from today? New South Wales. I'm on the Central Coast, so not too far away from Sydney. Okay. And is that your home area? Yes, it sure is. Yeah, I've I moved here from England when I was about four years old, and I've been here ever since. So okay. Well, I was going to say, tell me a little bit about England. But at four years old, you may not remember too much about it. No, I remember like little details, like um a park down the road which didn't have any swings, so I used to hate that park. <laughs> um, but that's that's as far as we really got from remembering any details. Okay. And and I was in England in about 2008. Uh, I stopped there on the way to Ireland and it's been a while. So it's starting to get to the point now, you know, at my age that that's almost like you being four years old, where it's like, I don't remember half of it, but uh, I can't wait to get back there someday. And I've actually never been to Australia. So I'm really hoping at some point I'll be able to make that trip. Yes, you'll have to come over. It's It's a lovely place. Definitely. All right. And one of the things I always like asking the the artists from Australia is what are some of the stereotypes that the rest of the world has about Australia that just aren't true? Or or maybe some of them may be true, but uh, I always like hearing the ones that aren't true. Oh, the shrimp on the barbie. That has to be the biggest one. I don't even think we get shrimp uh, here. It's like, yeah, that's that's a very stereotypical one. Or I think some people think we like ride our kangaroos to school or something like that <laughs> to work. Um, I you don't really see kangaroos wandering down the street. Um, just trying to think, what else? Well, and you mentioned the kangaroo thing. So I have talked to some people in Australia that are actually in the very rural areas that they say, yeah, we do have some kangaroos that will come up to the door. Uh, but unlike what people think, we don't pet them. We don't you know, go near them because they are ruthless. Yes, they are. They can actually be really dangerous um, and just sort of attack. So, yeah, we don't really get too close to them. Okay. And uh, I know that you've actually been to the United States. I think it was something I saw when maybe uh, 2019 or so when you were over in California. Uh, and, and the reason why I noticed that right away, because you got a, got to visit Disneyland and my wife is a huge Disney fan. So tell us about that visit. Oh, it was the most incredible trip of my life um, so far. We did, it was like a bit of a family holiday, but I did chuck in a couple of gigs. So I played, I did a live show in England um, and then I did a couple different things over there sort of music wise. And then on the way back, we stopped um, over in LA and went to Disneyland and that was such an incredible experience um but I we only stayed there for about a week so I didn't get a chance to get any shows in but I'm looking at coming back to the U.S. um hopefully next year or the following year and doing some shows and a bit of touring as well oh we definitely would love to have you back over here and uh you know we'll keep the viewers posted if that's going to happen but uh as far as Disneyland tell me what were some of your favorite attractions over there oh the there was the trying to think what it was called it was the light show um and the parade and I remember just like 
standing there and seeing all the fireworks and hearing all the songs above like the the big tower and that was so incredible and I went on another ride um oh, I think it was called the mummy ride and it was pretty scary and I forced my mum to come on it with me and the whole time she was screaming I thought I was worried she'd passed out at one point I think she's scarred sort of forever from that um but oh it was just it was so good it was one of my favorite days ever yeah I have to say one of my favorite parts about the that that park is the cars uh, section of it uh, I love how they have it all made up just like the movie and then the actual ride itself is is a fun ride to be on yes I did go on that one I do remember that one very clearly um and also the Peter Pan one you sat in like a little ship and it took you sort of over um over the world of, of Peter Pan it was yeah that was one of my favorites too yeah, well, that's awesome that you got that experience. And like I said, uh, uh, we're actually in Tampa, Florida, about an hour and a half outside of uh, where Disney World is. And so we are over there quite frequently because of my wife. So uh, uh, I'm very you know, I always have to bring up Disney whenever I can because that's what she likes about my podcast when I do that. Oh, no, I love that. That's so cool. <laughs> So now you got a, a song that's coming out. Well, I came out that's doing really well along the way. Uh, I've noticed that it's already hit 100,000 streams on Spotify alone, and it's only been out for a little over a month. Tell me about that and how excited you are that it's it's doing so well. Yeah, uh, this, like the release of this song and the journey over the last month um, in particular has been really incredible. I think when you're about to release a song, you've got all those nerves because you you never know like how it's going to go or what people are going to think about it. Um, but it got picked up onto some really big uh, Australian playlists and also some in the US. And people have just, yeah, loved it. And the response has been so amazing. And I've been doing, you know, interviews and podcasts sort of all over the world. I've been doing a lot in like Ireland and a whole bunch of different places. And it's just been a really incredible incredible ride and it's gotten into um the next stage of the international songwriting competition um and a listen the listen up music competition so that's next month that's an australian based competition um but yeah it, it was the 12th most streamed song on australian radio in release week and most streamed on release day so it's just it's just been amazing i'm, I'm so grateful yeah, congratulations on all that success. And, you know, what's kind of interesting is that I heard you describe the song before as a little bit different than some of your other songs. And I think the quote you may have said was a bit more happy. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I think I've always been drawn to writing sad songs. I just I just love writing the sad songs. Um, but when I started writing along the way, I'd sort of come to this place in my life where, you know, I was leaving school and looking at the future and, and everywhere I want to go. And I guess, as you would know, as being an artist and with all the people you talk to, there's not one set path to get to where you want. And, and sometimes it can be a journey navigating, you know, where you want to be. Um, and I think that's what I really try to embrace in this song is like, you know, all the things I want to do and the the career I want to make from my music. And I wanted to channel that into a song where other people could listen to it and be like, yeah, like I'm just going to trust the journey of life and something that you can just sing along to in a, a sort of feel good song. Well, we're definitely feeling good about it. So let's go ahead and play along the way here on Hank's Corner.
Welcome back to Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr. And that was Along the Way by Australian sensation Ella Powell. So Ella, tell us a little bit about your journey uh, into the music industry. When did you start uh, uh, thinking that, hey, this might be something for me? Yeah. Oh, well, it was, I st- started to sing sort of as soon as I could talk um, when I was a toddler. And I was just singing around the house for years, always making my parents watch my shows that I would have made up. Um, And then I started playing the guitar when I was about six years old, but I actually hated it. Mm. I think I was too young um, to sort of, you know, get your fingers around the fretboard and all that kind of stuff that I was like, nah, this isn't for me. And then when I was 10, um, my dad's a teacher and a music teacher from his school um, who's now had a really big part in sort of my musical career so far. He was like, oh, you know, come in and let's, I'll teach you a few chords and we can play a couple songs. And I've never put it down from there. He really sort of, I think maybe I was at that age where I was able to sort of understand and learn and take things in more. Um, and then I was singing since I was about eight. I wrote my first song when I was 10. Um, not that it was probably any good at all. <laughs> But what then, was the name of the song? Oh goodness, it was called um, it was called "I'll Be There for You." Yeah, and I even released it on YouTube. It's not there anymore. I oh. <laughs> I was gonna go start looking for it. <laughs> no, I, I might maybe I'll just send it to you if I if I find it. Um, but then from there I just started songwriting. You know, I went to heaps of songwriting classes, workshops, sort of started honing the skills. Um. And then in 2020, I released my very first single um, alongside a sold out single launch concert, which was the first sort of headlining show I'd ever done. And it's just been from there. um, I think Paper Town was a really big step for me, Um, as in, you know, I, I started working with a whole bunch of new people and it really started the the genre I wanted to go into you know that con- country pop sort of sound that I've got going on now um and it's just it's been full steam ahead since then really it's it's been a really fun journey and I've been very grateful to work with the people that I have so yeah I'm very lucky yeah it definitely seems like you're you're moving quickly you know from the time that you uh were you know around somewhere between six and eight and and, and you posted the video of your quote unquote first concert and you said that your dad uh was kind of forced to clap after <laughs> everything i mean i know you joke about that but you really do have a good support system with your family correct oh i am so lucky like I would not be where I am without them you know they've come to they've taken me to all my gigs all my concerts you know being the first to hear all my songs sat there and listened to everything and you know given me advice and supported me and I I, yeah I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the support of my family and my sister oh that's great and uh you mentioned uh paper town so why don't we go ahead and play that here on Hank's Corner sounds good Small talk, long roads in love with places I long to go. Pack bags, a dance, say goodbye out the review.
heard paper town by ella power here on hank's corner um hank jr now tell me a little bit about that song because that was another successful song for you uh i believe it was the ccma junior songwriter of the year award for that song correct yes yes that was really cool so tell me about how that song came about and then tell me how you felt you know when when that award you know came out for you yeah so this song, as I said before, it really started sort of this whole chain of, of where I am now. And during lockdown, I think there was a couple of silver linings for me because I really got to sit down and go, okay, what do I want to do? What genres do I want to go into? Because I'd loved so many genres before, um, which, which I still do. And, you know, I really, I was researching so much, looking up other artists that, you know, inspired me. Um and from there, I was like, you know, this is, I want to be a country pop artist. Like, this is really what I want to do. And a couple of days later, I remember that this chorus for Paper Town sort of just fell out. Um, and then I waited a couple months and then started sort of piecing the rest of the song together. But it was sort of about, I guess I... I'd been ready to leave school for a long time. It wasn't, you know, I know what I want to do. So sort of being there and, you know, having lockdown and HSC extended and all that boring stuff when I was so ready to just get out into the world and release my music and find sort of myself. Um, that was a bit of a challenge for me. And I think, you know, the blessing of that, though, is that's where Paper Town was sort of born from. And yeah, I didn't, I guess, because it was very different to anything I'd ever done before. And really the start of something new for me that the reaction was just awesome. Um, it got into the top 22 country songs of 2021, which was pretty exciting to see on New Year's Day this year. Yeah, I saw that because, you know, what's also amazing about not only it being there, but it was there with some big names like, you know, from America, like Blake Shelton and Carly Pierce. And then but from Australia, like Keith Urban and, and and other people like that like there you are with these heavy hitters i mean you had to be like uh like this is awesome i would guess i know i looked at it and i was like wait are you like have they got that right like how to look at it how to look at all the other names and i was just like i was so honored i was so stoked that they had put me um you know alongside all those people that i look up to so much in this world um so it was just incredible. And then when I got the the Junior Songwriter of the Year, that was another awesome sort of moment. And yeah, it sort of, I guess, re sort of, what's the word? It, it puts everything into perspective that, you know, you're, you're on the right path and all that kind of stuff. So no, it was a really beautiful moment to get that award. And it was a really lovely trophy as well. It's, um, it's a glass trophy. I think I may I have it somewhere. It's up there. <laughs> Well, that's that's definitely awesome to uh, to hear about that. Uh, so one of the things I also wanted to talk about was that not only do you do music, but you're also an advocate for the Central Coast Domestic Violence uh, Committee. Tell me about that and why you decided to you know be an advocate for them. Yeah, so I've always been very passionate about, you know, social justice. And back when I was eight, I, I was an advocate for um, Coast Shelter, which is a local homeless community um, charity. And I raised money and stuff for them. And then since then, you know, I've, 
I guess from being a young person and sort of seeing things in the world that aren't quite, that aren't right at all, you know, I wanted to make that change. And um, I had done a couple of different things with the Central Coast Domestic Violence Committee before. I played at some of their charity events. Um, I played a charity event last year with Grace Tame, who's quite a big advocate um, in Australia. And I reached out to them um, when we were having a conversation about something, just said, look, you know, I'd really love to use my music platform to also, you know, create change as well. Um, so that's been amazing so far. We're in the process of doing a whole bunch of different campaigns. Um, we've got the 16 days of activism against domestic violence. So that's in November um, with a lot of different things going on there. And it's just nice to be able to, you know, have that platform to be able to make change and speak up for younger people in the community as well. So yeah, it's something I'm very passionate about. Yeah. Good for you because you know, you're, you're only 18, correct. And for somebody that uh, is only 18, it seems like you've got a great head on your shoulders and you're already, you know, thinking about ways, Hey, how can I give back to, to the community? And that's so great to see that. Some people, you know, they, they may just try to, Hey, I, I need to make it big. That's, that's what I'm going to try to do. But, you know, you're on your way to stardom, but at the same time, you're giving back to the community. And, and that's a wonderful thing that you're doing. Yeah. Thank you. I think, you know, from a young age, it's always the people around you that help you to get where you are. And now that, you know, I'm doing so many different things internationally and nationally and all that, you know, it's, you've always got to remember the people that, really initially helped you and that's sort of where i really wanted to give back with this as well all right and uh we're going to go ahead and play uh, another song real quick we'll play side effects another great song and when we come back we'll talk a little bit more awesome happy ever after so they say wanna believe it ends that way not a friday in july sitting on the curb with hours gone by Streetlights turn on, crowds disappear And I'm standing here checking my phone a hundred times Thinking of a reason why Guess we know what we know Go today, bar we went for your birthday. Stomach nods up instead. My heart wants to pretend. I'm driving in those summer nights, music up from windows down. Waiting to see your headlights, only thing that I've seen now. First mistake was loving you.
Welcome back to Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr. And once again, we are talking with the Australian artist, Ella Powell, and that was Side Effects. So I want to talk a little bit some more about the maybe fun side of you, uh, get to know you more as a person as, as well as being an artist. But uh, so you are on my playlist, one of the songs that, uh, you know, I will listen to. Uh, but currently, what is on your playlist? Oh, my playlist. I have a lot of Carly Pierce. I'm loving um, one of her newer songs, What He Didn't Do. That's one of my favourites at the moment. Um, I love Kelsey Ballerini. She's one of my favourites. She's just released a new single called Little Things. Um, what was the other one? Love is a Cowboy. And they're just amazing songs. Got a bit of Taylor Swift on there. Um, and also some of my favourite Aussie artists. I love Delta Goodrum. Um love some country artists like Casey Barnes, um, Rachel Farhim. Yeah, there's there's so much on those playlists. Um, and also Eva Cassidy. Um, she was She's someone who really inspired me through my younger years because my dad would always sort of play um, her songs around the house. So she's on there a lot. Um, what else have we got? Oh, also, I discovered a new artist recently called In Ingrid Address. Address? Mm -hmm. That's it. Yes, I know she's um she's American. I hadn't really come across her songs before, and I just listen to that all the time. Yeah, she's an amazing artist too. So yeah, definitely, she is uh, up and coming, and uh, you know she's ready to to break out any any moment now. So uh, uh, that's awesome to hear some of that. And and when you're not playing music, uh, what are you doing? And what are you doing for fun? Yes, well, I love going to the gym. Um, I go to the gym a lot. I used to I used to hate any form of exercise, but I've gotten got it into it now. Um, I have a dog called Maggie. She's nine now, but I always take her for walks. Um, I spend a lot of time with my family. I have a sister who's twelve, so we we get along really well and spend a lot of time together. Um, I love to read poetry. I, I write some poetry as well. I'm hanging out with some friends, going to the beach because I live not too far, um, only about a 10-minute walk from the beach. So I walk down there a lot. And that's, yeah, I, oh, I love true crime documentaries. Love wow, true there crime. you go. Uh, I definitely can get behind that one. So uh, oh. good, good choice there. Yeah. Let, let, let's talk about food. Tell me, what are some of your favorite foods and maybe something that if I were to come down there that I would just have to try? Oh, um, we do very good barbecues over here. I do have to say my, <laughs> my family, um, we love our barbecues or because I'm from originally from England, we do a roast dinner, um, mm. with like Yorkshire puddings and all that stuff or pasties. That's very English, but that's one of my favorites. Um, and I am addicted to chocolate. I do love my chocolate. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's our oh, love. I'm trying to think what else is really oh Tim Tams, Tim Tams okay. are Australian. I can't get behind Vegemite. I know a lot of people love it, but and it's very Australian, but it's just not not for me. Yeah, um, I hear you either love it or hate it. Yeah, it's it's not my not my type at all. Not my vibe. Um, oh, I'm trying to think what else is like a a classic Australian food. Is that what what sort of things do you th sort of see as Australian food? Well, you know, I I go with all the stereotypes, and you already told me that shrimp on the barbie is a no go. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, definitely uh, definitely like barbecues, uh, uh, whether it's you know American style or Australian style. I mean, just cooking out there on the grill for me that is uh, that is something I like to do because not only do you get to eat good food, but while you're cooking it, it's usually a great time to socialize. Oh, definitely. Yeah, no, that's good fun. Yeah, definitely. And if you could go anywhere uh, in the world, where would you like to go? Nashville. It's hey. my, yeah, it is the place I really just cannot wait to go. Um, as I said before, I'm hopefully going very soon, but just Music City. Yes, I cannot wait. I want to go there so badly. Yeah, it's definitely a fun place. I get to get up there, uh, you know, a couple times a year and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm loving it and I, I know you'll love it too. And, uh, it's just, everybody says it's, it's fun, but everybody treats you like a family over there and, uh, uh, definitely a great place to do that. 
Yes. Oh, no, that's like number one. I cannot wait to go there, which hopefully will be very soon. So. All right. And I know you had a big year last year as far as, you know, some some with the music and then, of course, graduating and you're doing very well this first half of the year. What's in store for the uh, second half of the year? I hear that there may be something uh, out on the horizon. Yes. So I have a brand new single coming out um, in hopefully looking around the start of October, end of September. So one, two months time. Um, and this one is it's quite similar is in genre wise to along the way um it's very summery it's probably more upbeat than what along the way um is and it sort of it tells quite a fun story i'm going to keep the title a bit of a secret for the moment um but no i can't wait we're shooting the music video at the moment um shooting the cover artwork and sort of working with my team to start getting everything together and getting it out there but no I can't wait for that and then looking at got some live shows um, happening which I'll be releasing sort of more info on my pages very soon um, and an album is sort of in the works for next year um, and then a couple more singles before that so just releasing as much music as I can um, I got the Tamworth Country Music Festival in January uh, so yeah, heaps and heaps of stuff going on. Yeah, you definitely have a, a lot going on and we'll definitely, you know, looking for that. And uh, uh, as soon as that song comes out, I guarantee that uh, you'll find it uh, here on Hank Jr. Productions on my uh, new Music Friday post that I do quite a bit. So, uh, you know, be looking for that. But in the meantime, uh, we're going to go ahead and play uh, somebody as we end the show. Uh, but we'll definitely be looking for that. But uh, Ella, thanks so much for coming on my podcast. It was definitely a pleasure for those of you that are uh, listening uh, on Spotify or other platforms uh, uh, or watching this on YouTube, please check out Ella's uh, social media, also ellapower.com, correct? Yep. Yep, ellapower.com, um, Ella Power Music on Instagram and Facebook, and then just Ella Power on Spotify, Apple Music, anywhere you can find music pretty much. <laughs> All right, definitely check that out. Uh, once again, that's Ella Powell, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and uh, if you ever want to be a guest back here on Hank's Corner, you're more than welcome to do so. Oh, I would love to. Thank you so much for having me. And it's, it's great to finally be able to meet you. Crowded room with faces that don't know me. All I see is everywhere I'm gonna be Found the possibility Down every lonely street I'll take the good and bad and all in between Scars don't define where I can go
With all I've been given and found along the way Here I am, wouldn't be here 